Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are out there in the world, it's time to step out onto the high wire. Well, what does all this have to do with Atlas? Well, you know, when I watch the comments in the show, a lot of times I'll see it written in the comments, oh, from your lips to God's ears, Dell. Well, this week, perhaps the next best thing. It went from our lips to President Trump's ears. What am I talking about? Well, this is what I said all the way back in May. Contact tracing, although an important part of the overall preparation for potential future outbreaks, is not critical right now as, and is not as valuable after a disease is already widespread, infecting tens of millions of people. It is unrealistic to expect that complete contact tra tracing will need to be feasible before reopening, where you have 30% of New York already infected at the moment or 5% in other states or 10% when you have a sizable portion of the population already infected, they, they have been exposing almost everyone else. There's an alternative to contact tracing, and that is to say we identify people at higher risk and we carefully protect them from exposure to the virus. And people at low risk, we actually expect the virus to circulate. So contact tracing in that group almost defeats the purpose. Treating COVID-19 at all costs is severely restricting other medical care and instilling fear in the public, creating a massive health disaster. Does anyone else out there wish you could vote on, on like who's gonna run this country since clearly presidents aren't and prime ministers aren't around the world. Now it's doctors and we should be allowed to vote, right? I wanna vote out Fauci and Burks and maybe vote in Atlas, Katz, Ioannidis, and Mr. Roy, all of these people, brilliant scientists that have established medical schools in this country. I'd like them making the decision in this country, wouldn't you? Well, that's what I said all the way back on May 14th. As you know, here on the High Wire, we have been showing you that really the majority of scientists, virologists, doctors around the world disagree with the draconian measures of lockdowns, masks. They Hey everybody, good evening, good day, good morning, good whatever it is in your world. I hope you're having an amazing day today. It's Dr. Eric Naputi. Uh, welcome back, Common Sense Health Nation. I love the, the fact that we get a chance to connect again on this amazing topic. And uh, listen, just like the many interviews that we've had in the past, this one is not going to disappoint. I am very excited about having with us today, honestly, someone who I've studied his materials for a long time, who's been an influence in my practice. My practice is, he probably doesn't even know that, but he's been in the influence of a lot of other wellness doctors, Dr. Larry Polevsky. Uh, Dr. Lawrence, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day uh, to hang with us. Uh, before I bring you on, let me tell a little, everybody a little bit about you. Um, so I just learned this a little bit ago. I didn't know you had taught uh, uh, pediatric chiropractic courses for over nine years. I knew that you were involved with teaching holistic care. Uh, he's been a, a medical, you graduated from, was it NYU, I believe you graduated from uh, in, in the in the late uh, 80s and has been in private practice in uh, Long Island for quite some time. Uh, is uh, And I love on your, your website, Healing the Whole Child Naturally. And uh, listen, my audience knows you. They've watched you on YouTube. We've seen you speak in front of uh, government officials about uh, freedom to choose when it comes to rights for uh, for parents and for children. So I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with us for a little bit of time. So so thank you, doctor. I appreciate that. Well, thank you, Dr. Eric. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm looking forward to the next hour or so of conversation. So, so Dr. Larry, let's just kind of get right into it. Obviously, you are a pediatrician. You've been a pediatrician for over 30 years, if I understand that correctly. I graduated uh, 1987. 1987 and um, have just been, have, you know, you started out as a, as a standard medically trained doctor mm -hmm. and, um, and then made a switch. There was a switch in your life that you said, you know, hey, this is something I want to do differently. Can you talk a little bit about your transition or what you experienced getting you from you know, standard medical training to now looking at, you know, the whole aspect, getting away from just treating symptoms to treating cause. Tell sure. us about the journey a little bit. Well, I had a fantastic medical education. I went to NYU School of Medicine starting in 1983. And in 1985, when we did our clinicals in the hospitals, uh, I, I started with surgery. I really liked it. 
I did medicine, internal medicine. It was okay. But when I hit pediatrics, my world really opened up. And the, the pediatricians who were teaching us in medical school had been in practice in New York since the 1940s. And so they had some of the most amazing clinical skills, clinical pearls. I mean, they could smell, taste, touch. They could hear. I mean, they had such senses to, to practice uh, clinical medicine. And when, once I realized I loved pediatrics, I just glommed onto them and just watched them and felt what they were doing. And I mean, I learned it academically, but, but there was a craft that they were, they were demonstrating. And then when I went to uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York in 1987 for my internship and residency, a ton more pediatricians from the 1940s all the way up. And they just had, you know, this, this, this feel, right? And they grew up in medicine at a time when they didn't need tests. They took a history, they took a physical, and 95% of the time, just on the history and physical alone, they could make their diagnosis and do their treatment plan. Right. And so after the, finishing the residency, I, I did a year of fellowship at Bellevue back at NYU, uh, in the outpatient department in the ER. And then my first four years out in the real world were in a pediatric emergency room as an attending in the Bronx in New York. And I actually started to realize the difference between an ivory tower of an educational system where you're protected and then the real world. Yeah. And <clears throat> what I started to see clinically was that what I was trained to do and how I was trained to think applied. But then once the real world hit, I had to start using more of my tools.